So design patterns are everywhere. And as an actual engineer, I use them all the time in designing systems. So there are just known patterns. So there are books in my field of expertise that have, a, you know, 70 or 80 patterns. And basically all systems combine those patterns in different ways to achieve some outcome. So the human body also has design patterns, as do all other living systems. But we use sort of common vernacular to describe these. So one, which I really enjoy, is the push-pull principle. We all know in your car you have a completely different system to accelerate than you have for decelerating, right? So you have an engine to accelerate and the gas pedal and all that stuff. And then you have a braking system to decelerate. If you had to decelerate with just the engine, you could take your foot off the gas and coast for miles before you stop, which is not going to help when you get to a school crossing. So you need both systems. With the body, you have mechanical systems like I can extend my arm, I can retract my arm, but that uses completely different sets of muscles. So in your eye, you have six muscles that control the rotation of your eye. If you had five muscles, you could look off to the side here, but you couldn't get your eye back. So it's an example of how you need two different systems. So there's others like, how do you accelerate the beating of your heart versus decelerating the beating of your heart? Two completely different systems for that. Now, there's also the interaction problem with that because I can't contract the muscles that push and pull at the same time. So there's a huge coordination problem. I have to relax certain muscles while I'm contracting others. So there's all these control issues in these systems. So another design pattern is control systems, and this is everywhere in the body. Control systems always have some kind of sensor, some kind of logic. It could be as simple as a, an on-off switch, or it could be extremely complex, like uh, sending signals to your muscle groups to do a coordinated action, like, you know, touch your nose with your finger. That involves many, many muscle groups. The last thing you need in a control system is an effector. So an, an example everyone gets is the heating system in your home. You have a thermostat on the wall. You have somewhere in that thermostat, there's logic, a mercury switch or an electronic uh, circuit of some kind that knows you, you set a set point when the temperature gets in the thermostat gets below that set point, it clicks on, that's the logic, and then it directs a signal to the effector, which is your furnace, to fire up the heat. And uh, the blower then starts blowing up through your house. So those are the three basic elements of a control system and they're everywhere in the body. And again, that control system is a causal hurdle. You cannot have a half of a control system. Another example of a recurring pattern, which I, I really uh, learned a lot from Howard uh, on this, is this notion of a global resource with local applications. So blood clotting, you have all the clotting mechanisms freely flowing in your circulatory system all the time. But they're only activated when you have a break in the wall of, of a blood vessel. So there's signaling that happens at that site that tells the clotting system to go into action. So it's, it essentially turns on the clotting system, but only at that location, because that's exactly what you need. If it clots other times in other places, you're in trouble. If it doesn't clot when you're bleeding, you're, you're in trouble. So again, it's, it's another design pattern. There's lots of other examples of that sort of global resource uh, too.